is you can like it. You can like it um, and you can save as well. Now, what I'm gonna say is if you wanna edit these, like you like where it starts and you wanna edit it, you're gonna wanna save it. Um, that's kind of the best way to go. And then you actually have the option to put it in a collection. So if you have your units um, or your topics, you can actually put those in units as well um, for your collection. So then you can go back to your library and you've got all of these different ones that you have in there. And so I have addition and subtraction facts right here. And the nice part is, I have the ability to start a lot with, to assign, to copy, to edit. I mean, I can go in here and make all of these different um, changes to it, which is really powerful when you start to think about it. Um, if there's one question you don't like, just delete it. You want to add, you can do it. So in terms of being a teacher, it's a huge, huge time saver. So I'm gonna actually start a live quiz just to give you a sense of what it would look like as a kid. Um, when you do start a live quiz, like I said, there's the classic where you go at your own pace and there's a leaderboard and then there's the instructor pace, which I think is really powerful. So I'm gonna go through and um, give you guys just a chance to see and we'll do instructor paste as well so you can see that. Um, so I'm gonna do, this is one thing. Oh, when you do start these quizzes, one thing I absolutely love about quizzes is the name factory where you can use fun quizzes generated names. And I'll let you see what that looks like. Uh, the reason I love that is I work with middle schoolers and um, sometimes middle schoolers put names that you would rather not see, or there's just, it kind of gets into be a pain. And so when you get those just generated names, it can be really nice to just not have to worry about that. Um, they can see the timer, the leaderboard, and then the shuffle as well. I'm going to turn off the music just because if I talk during it, um, it'll be really annoying. <laughs> so what you'll see, and this is what you would present for your kids, is you will go to have them go to joinmyquiz.com and enter that game code. Uh, one of the nice parts is you can actually copy that link so that I can put this in the Google or the Zoom chat and you would have a copy of that as well. So I'm going to give you guys a couple, a minute, love for you to join just so you can see what it looks like from a student perspective. And you can see the fun names that pop up. Yeah, Jackfruit Jefferson. <laughs> And I think that's um, just about everything. But one thing I do like, and I wanted to mention before we go any further, is if you have a kid, and like I said, I teach, so this does happen to me every once in a while, who, if you didn't have the name factory on and they wrote something inappropriate or their name or thing, you're like, mm, no, you power to remove the student and they can can sign back up again and that classroom management standpoint kind of thing. So I'll go ahead and start it so you can see this. Um, it's telling me my internet connection is unstable. Ooh, that's a little scary. We'll try it anyway and see what goes. Um, and so likely there's music. You can go ahead and proceed as well. And then it tells me it lights everyone up. And then it gave us a minute for that. We don't need a minute. Um, now, obviously, if you were working with other kids, little kids, you might need that minute. You can disable the timer. Ooh, my apologies. That's probably my internet being a hot mess right now as well. 
Um, and you can end the question as well. So kind of a nice feature. So you can end the question, it'll have all done, and then you can kind of see the question leaderboard. So everyone got it correct. So it's kind of nice a dashboard what's the as well. So I'll give you another question that you can see. And then it says we're good to go. And then gives us the leaderboard. So the leaderboard is based upon getting the correct answer, but then how fast you get the correct answer. The other nice part is let's say you do have a kid who walks in your class, the a very top the logo with the code so they can still join as well, which is kind of a nice feature when you have kids who walk in late or um, somebody gets kicked off the internet because you know life happens in schools um, and you can go from there as well. So it gives you an idea of what all the different things are. So we'll do one more question and then I'll just kind of end the game for the sake of our time here and keeping everyone on pace. And then you have the ability to, like I said, you can turn on the volume, you can skip to the next question. So if you want to go to a specific question, you can do that as well. Um, and you can jump around. So if I wanted to go to question 15, because I was running out of time and I knew I needed to hit question 15, I can then do that as well, which is kind of a nice feature. Um, for you as a teacher, when you're sitting there going, oh, I've only got three minutes instead of the five I thought, um, or those types of things. And it gives you that idea. And then, of course, there is the ability to end the lesson as well. So you just hit exit, and then you hit, yes, you want to end the lesson. It does tell you who comes in first, second, and third as well, which is always a nice feature. Um, so you have those kids that really care about that. You will then also get the results, which is kind of nice. Um, and if we had the specifics, I could then, you know, look very closely and see who got what right or wrong. And so in terms of data, it's really powerful to know what you need to work on and where kids are strong and weak. So, you know, obviously your score of 25% is just because I ended the quiz, um, but it gives you an overview of those students. Um, additionally, if you look at the questions, it'll tell you who has what accuracy as well as the average time taken on that. Um, so it's kind of cool. The other nice part is you can download the results. So I've known teachers who have used the results for different things and downloaded them as a review or as a practice as well. It does, I've never used this feature, I'll be honest with you, but you can actually email people. Um, so if you would add a parent or guardian's email, you could actually send a report of their quiz. Um, I have never used that one to be honest with you, um, but it does allow for that. And then another nice feature is it does review questions. So if you're looking for a good overview to review, you can do that as well. Lauren. And, and of course. Oh, yeah. We have a question my volume? in the chip. Oh, yeah. You're, you're okay. Um, can you, like, if you're using the game names, is there a way to know what student that actually is? So I believe that you, like, if you have them, I, I do it where they log in with Google and I have it sync with Google. So I know the kids' names. Okay. Um, now here's the difference. So I usually, if I'm going to have the kids' names, I'm usually doing it on the asynchronous version. So the version where it's not live. 
Got it. And they can do it multiple times. So I like that because if I've got a kid who is, you know, on an IEP or something like that, I then usually give them the highest score um, versus the nice part about doing it with the names is, and I, I know for me, like I work with competitive middle schoolers who sometimes get a little bit rambunctious. And so just depends on what you want to do with it, but you can have them do their real names or you can have them do the, you can turn off the name generator and it won't do that. Good question. Cause it does make a difference when you're trying to plan. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks. It's hard. I, the little boxes over on the side. So sometimes if I miss it, I appreciate it. Um, and so, yeah, we've got review questions as well. And then I love this. It tells you the toughest question and the longest question. And it gives you an idea of where kids are strong and weak overall. So it's got some great options when you look at that. So like I said, um, I'll show you some of these features, some of the things that you can do um, when you go to create a quiz. If you would want to just create, like you've got your own questions you want to do, you can just create straight up a quiz. Um, what it'll have you do is select a topic and then you kind of add in your quiz name. Create a blank quiz for you. Now, the nice part is they have really expanded Love that. Sorry, I, I don't know why my internet connection is doing. Um, they've really expanded options such as multiple choice, check box, fill in the blank, poll, open ended. And then I'll talk later on about how the slide feature works with um, it's the lesson feature. It's kind of a new one, which is kind of cool. Um, when you look at these, though, you can change the visibility. So it can be visible to the public, um, visible to you, and only those shared. Especially change this for a specific question. So if it's a question that's a little bit more reading, maybe you change it to 45 seconds versus a quick addition question. Maybe you have that one be shorter. You would have a better idea um, than anyone else. You can also add the grades. And then um, you can import from a spreadsheet. So if you've got like a spreadsheet as well, and when you click that, they actually give you the template for that. I'll be honest with you. I just usually put in my stuff um, in the quizzes platform versus uploading from a template. One thing I really do think is kind of cooler that they added a little while ago is they kind of give you a quiz quality score just to make sure you've got all of the elements in there that you need. But this is really cool. I love this. This is called teleport questions. Now teleport questions is awesome. So if doing a quiz on the bill of rights, I could type in first amendment. And it is just going to find me questions on the First Amendment. I can literally filter if I want. Um, if I want to grab one of these First Amendment freedom questions, I can just add these. And so this comes from a bunch of different quizzes, a bunch of different ones. You can kind of pick and choose which ones you like um, and which ones you don't. So if I like this multiple choice one, I can sit there and hit add. And it's going to add that to my... Um, thing. You know, I like these scenarios and I want to add these. I could then put those in as well. You know, so it's kind of cool this port option where it's letting you do a multitude of quizzes to ultimately get what you want and try to find it. Now you have to be, of course, a little bit careful when you go through these 
and you're trying to find the different pieces parts. And you can see the, the defaults on these are a little bit different for the number of seconds that these quizzes can take. And you can have as short as five seconds and as long as 15. Um, and so you get that power. And if there's a typo, you could just hit edit um, and fix the typo as well. You can also just add your own new question. So you can add the checkbox feature. You just type your questions and then add in all of the different stuff. Um, it does have the math equation functions. And I will be honest with you, I am not fluent in the math equation functions very much. So um, while it has it, I can't tell you how quickly or easy or accessible that is. Um, I just know it has it. <laughs> Another nice feature, you can insert images and um, as well in your answers, which is kind of a cool feature, um, especially if you're adding more visual options to your quiz. And so there's multiple choice, checkbox, fill in the blank. Um, and with fill in the blank, you get the option of contains or equals. Now these are super features. So those are part of their um, you know, paid features, um, but there's also is exactly. So if you have something very specific, it is exactly. Poll is also cool. Um, polls are ungraded, obviously, because it would be an opinion question, but you can get feedback as well. If you were to do the lesson, um, I could see the poll being a great exit ticket or an entrance to a lesson as well. And you can also allow for multiple submissions, which is cool. So they've really expanded all of these different things and then open-ended as well. You write, and then they obviously will then give you um, give you that information. Open-ended are not, are ungraded, obviously because of the way that they work, um, but you have that option. And especially when I show you how the lesson feature works, it can be a really helpful resource. So in terms of the ability to do things, they have really expanded what you can do and the creativity. And you know, for as a teacher, it's really nice just this even this teleport feature or the finding other quiz, you can take something from somewhere else and use it as a starting point. So you're not reinventing the wheel. When you're done, and you've got it exactly how you want, you just hit publish. Um, and then you'll be able to kind of see as well. Um, I you do your missing elements so it gives you an idea as well. Lauren, we have a question. Yes. Um, can you see what the students write for an open-ended question to grade them yourself? So yes, I think you can see it. I don't know, and I've never done, I admit I have not done an open-ended question. Um, and I can see that in the next part when we do the lesson for sure if you could go in now, I'm wondering if you'd have to go in and like hand grade those yourself, um, you know, which could take time, but I, I mean, it's going to record the answers for you. So you at least would have that data per se. Thank you. Yeah. I know they've really expanded because I was, I was just telling Shelly before this, I was like, I haven't even used the lesson feature um, and realistically, it's a really cool feature. And I, I kind of felt like I was underusing this program. And I was like, the, it, it, they really expanded what you can do. So yeah, let me kind of dive into that lesson feature because I think it's really helpful. And I think it's kind of one of those solutions when we look at how do you have, you know, your these more interactive for students um, and create experience where we find multimedia and then also questions. So under create, they have lesson and you get to, you know, similar thing. You type in your title. As well. Now, what I love about this is you get to kind of use this like you can create within the platform here of the lesson, 
But what I really like is down here, import slides, because if you're anything like me, you already might have some Google slides ready to roll and you don't want to reinvent the wheel. There's no sense in retyping. You get to import your slides from either PowerPoint or Google slides and save yourself the time and the energy, which let's be honest, we all could use. <laughs> um, so let me talk though about, and I'll show that feature here in a second, um, what you can do. They do have the ability for you to do things like you can change the font, especially if you do the super font or the super fonts and all that, you can change it to all these different things as well and see. Um, and there's different themes. So if you want to be really creative, you can do the different themes as well. I believe the themes, yeah, the theme is one of their upgraded paid um, elements, but you can still do a lesson without it being a paid element, which is kind of nice. There's just certain features they lock down because of it. So you've got all of those different things that you can do in here. You can even upload an image as well. Um, but really what I think for teachers is going to be the best. And like I said, you can then add um, your different things. So let's say you, you want to just create within there. You can add in a slide and you can type in information. Now, the one thing that makes this a little different is you got to notice you're going and you're typing your title over on the side. You're not actually typing on the slide, which makes this a little bit different just to get used to it. And then you add your details. So it's almost like having Pear Deck built into quizzes. Yes. That's a really good way to say it. <laughs> really, I, I think these pro kind of like taking um, taking note of what the ovens are doing and integrating features. Um, and then as part is, then you have those abilities to add in those small choice and building whole or open-ended. So you can then add that open-ended question and you get those details. So you can, you know, add your question for students. So it's building in, just like Shelly said, and I like that reference to Pear Deck, it's building in kind of that Pear Deck thing where you're gonna get that data, where you can do that multiple choice question, you can do that poll, you can do all of those different things. And so really expanded. And, and the other nice part is, now these I believe are premium, you can add YouTube videos as well. Um, I don't believe they have any other platform besides YouTube though. Um, and they are starting with the web page. So you might be able to work around um, if you don't have just a YouTube video. So you could even show a video, have your questions afterwards as well. So similar idea, we're combining all those elements. And so you can create those interactive lessons. Now, one thing Pear Deck, I would say does better is Pear Deck has the add-on. So when you go to create all this stuff, you're, you're in your Google slide. Whereas with this, you have to import your slides. You can things, you can import a PDF, you can import Google Slides, and you can import a PowerPoint. Now, the way they do it, and it's not got that fancy um, add-on that Pear Deck does, is they're going to actually have you download that as a PDF. So I'm going to show you an example of that really quick. Um, so you can kind of see that. So let me grab my Bill of Rights presentation. So the way that you actually then would download a PDF um, in order to use it is you go to the upper right hand corner and you go to file and you go to where's my download, download, <laughs> download, and then you download it as a PDF. You can do the same thing in PowerPoint and download as a PDF in PowerPoint as well. So if you're, you're a PowerPoint person, you still have that option as well. Now, when you go to import slides, what you'll do is you'll click it and you can then import it. So you just have to upload the PDF. And so for me, I go to my downloads folder. It's right there. I hit open. And then it's going to convert um, and put all of that in 
One thing I do like is that you can select which slides you want or don't like. Um, so you don't have to import all of them if you want or some of them, and then you'll import it. So in many ways, it's taking the lessons of Pear Deck and kind of incorporating them with some of those game elements that quizzes is, is already doing really well. I probably should not have imported 21 slides. It probably will take a second and my internet's being a little slow. <laughs> Since you're importing them as PDFs, will you be able to edit them at all? No, and that's one of the downfalls of it. So once it's a PDF, you cannot go in and edit this. So it is literally just basically like a picture um, and you can like have it so it fills screens or that kind of stuff and you can add a caption, but that's it. You really are limited, whereas I do think um, Pear Deck does a better job because it's an add on on your Google slide. And so you have a little bit, if you want to edit something, it's a little bit easier. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Because it makes it makes a difference because if you've got access to Pear Deck, then this feature may not be something you're as excited about. But if you don't have access to Pear Deck and you do have access to this, that would be, you know, one of those things to consider. Um, and so you can do all of that. The There is publishing so you can see who sees it and then you can publish as well. So I'm going to go out. Um, it's obviously telling me that this is incomplete, but you can kind of see all of those different things as well. Um, under reports, reports are great because they give you all of the different things that you know kids do well and do, don't do well with. Um, and just for the sake of not kind of going through there, you can kind of see the reports at a later date, which is nice for your quizzes and for your lessons, um, which is always really good when you're trying to get a sense of what is going on. Um, so I'm going to pick on Shannon here because Shannon had logged in with her Google account. And so her Google account saves her name and then does have her actual name here. So I know that question kind of came up earlier. Um, and so it's going to tell me which one she got correct and wrong as well. I also have that feature to print. Now, this is going to work because she's logged in with Google. So I know most of us, or I, I, and I apologize, I don't know if your school does this, but for most of us, having that Google login makes that easy to give us those that information. Any questions? before and I'm looking at my time and I'm like, oh, we got another one to cover. <laughs> um, any questions for me on quizzes before I jump over to GIMCAT? The chat is clear. All right, we're going to jump and I apologize. I'm like all over the place. Um, so GIMCAT is another program and I absolutely, this was a huge, very popular in my class this year. I will be 100% honest with you. This was what kids wanted to play. Um, and the reason being is GimKit is really cool in a sense that it mixes up the games. And I don't know about you, but I teach middle school. So um, kids love sabotaging each other in games, as I've discovered. And GimKit gives that as an option. Now, for those of you who teach elementary who have no interest in the idea of sabotage happening in a game, there's a way to turn that off. So I'll show you here in a second. Uh, so for GimKit, I'm gonna give you an example. I have, um, and they also just like um, quizzes have the asynchronous option as well. So I'm gonna actually give us a second to play a live game so you can see. Um, like I said, the one thing I really love about this game is you can take the same questions and you can play it in a bunch of different ways, which really makes it nice. So you can do, um, this is a new one that they're doing, um, an Among Us inspired one where they find the imposter. I will be honest with you for your first one, don't start with this one because the kids need to know how to kind of work the platform before they uh, There's classic where students compete individually. 
um, team that'll put them. This one's really cool. Uh, I love this. And if we have time, I'll get to this draw that where the kids draw vocabulary words and try to figure it out. I think for like spelling words, this could be really fun. Um, it was also really great at the end of the year. I used it when we had like an extra five or 10 minutes here or there. Um, it was actually a lot of fun. This game, the floor is lava was a huge hit in my class because it's the whole class trying to defeat a time, um, basically a timer and trying to stay above the lava. And one of my favorite things about this game is that you as the teacher get to sabotage a little bit and you can raise the lava um, and mess with the lava levels. And you can watch the kids get all excited about this. Uh, humans versus zombies and they can sabotage each other and do cool things with that. Um, infinity mode, they have to either question get stones. This one's really interesting boss battle. You pick one student versus everyone else, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then super rich hidden mode and then drained is also. So there's a lot of different ones, but what I really love about this platform is they're always changing it up and mixing it up. So they find new ones. They change out some of the different things as well. So I'm going to actually just throw us on team mode here and show you, um, you can adjust. So you know how many thing about the term is you the ability to control the time so if you want a game to last minutes it's gonna last two minutes actually i'm gonna have ours last a minute for time's sake you could do race or all in uh you can also have it logged in with google classroom so um i have my different class periods here or you could do it with none you give them starting cash handicap answer check music um which their music is pretty pretty interesting i turn off this clapping feature i'm going to be honest with you because at the end of the game they give you the claps and it's just weird <laughs> and then this is the power up so they can power up they can have different themes and then especially depending on your class the clean power ups only this allows only power ups that don't hurt other players um, middle schoolers love if I turn this off, but I mean, if you teach elementary, you might not want that feature. So I'm going to actually just turn this on so you can get a sense of this game. Um, and this is just the team one, but there's so many more options. So, um, what you'll do is you go to gimkit.live and then put in this code. And like the other games, one feature I really love is, um, and I'm going to pick on Shannon just because I can, if she were to type a name that was inappropriate or didn't care for, I could actually remove her from the game and she could still put the code back in and fix her name. Um, but the nice part is if they're logged in with Google, <laughs> it just gives them your name and you don't have to worry about that, which is always fun. Paper, I love it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started because we have six people and I just want to be cognizant of your time. So it creates um, the teams, somebody's still entering name, but it's still creating them. Um, and it, it gives them random colors, which are always fun, like, you know, and you can reshuffle if you need to and then start the game. And so there is music. I'm not going to turn it on. But of course, I, I love to blare the music in my classroom. Um, but you'll notice in the upper right hand corner of your screen as the student, you'll actually have the power to um, do purchases, power ups. Um, it's kind of crazy the options that they have, but you also have the ability to sabotage. So some of my students favorite ways to sabotage is to blur each other's screens. Um, they also like. So 
always power up, change the music. They, they also upgrade, and I see a lot of guys are doing that, upgrade your streaks or your bonuses as well. Um, those are also really good activities. Um, and it just has those two um, codes and those two teams. So it can get really interesting and fun to go back and forth. And like I said, I'd give us more time. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll record who does first and second. It also does a report as well, which is great. And tell your or them also general overview and the hash rate, which is really your little different thing. Um, so it's it's a really cool option. Um, for students. But GIMKit is not, it's got more than this. So one thing that I absolutely love is it also has the ability to assign homework. So this is that asynchronous option. You can take a minute and you know you can give this to students, they can play it on their own, and they can do it on their own. So you can assign it to a specific class if you want or you can just have it as a general option. You can assign a due date. Now, this is something I learned the hard way is watch how much your target cash is. 100,000 is actually a lot. And especially if you were using this with elementary kiddos, I would kind of take that down significantly and it was their first time because they might not, um, they, it might take them a little bit longer. The other thing I like to use is the advanced features. This is something I do, especially if I'm assigning it as homework, what's the longest time it should take to complete an assignment. Um, and you know, they, uh, their default is 60 minutes. And I remember some kid spent 60 minutes on there and I was like, what, you spent 60 minutes? I was thinking it was gonna take 20. And so after I learned that they were taking 60 minutes, I, was, I reduced that down to 20. I wasn't really upset by the kid who took 60 minutes though, cause they did ace the test later on. Um, and you can create this as a assignment, which is really cool. Um, the other part is WinKet is you can also search. So you also have a very similar search. So um, amendments. I've got a bunch of different ones that you can see. And then you can also, as you go, see the questions on the side. So it also allows you to um, take questions from other teachers. Now, I will be very honest with you. I think GIMKit does not have as many quizzes or options in terms of like, they're, they're, they have options, but they are, um, their platform doesn't have as many made as quizzes does. So Overall, you've got a lot of different things. You can edit, you can check the reports for those. You can move to a folder as well. So you can see all those different reports um, and go back to them, which is always a really nice feature. Assignments, those are things that you have assigned. So you can kind of see I've assigned some different things in the past. Classes, these are the different members of your classes that you can then go ahead and you can adjust. And I, the nice part of these classes, when you go to add a new class, you can, let's see, create the class. And then the nice part is the way that you invite them is you just copy that link and you can then give that to your students or you can authenticate it with Google or email. So you can do all of that as well and get those. So it's got your specific students and then it records their names so that you know, you know, this person was in the class and how much time they took and their accuracy. So if you did, or were going to take it for like a homework grade or something on an asynchronous platform, you could then actually get that information. Now, one thing that I actually really like about GimKit is they have what's called Kit Collab which I think is a really cool thing that they've added. And I've done this a couple of times with my students and it was actually really um, interesting is the students create the game. So when you go to Kit Collab, what happens is you give the students the option to actually submit questions. Um, I, you gotta pick a picture. 
but and it was cool so like what i did with this for a lesson is and i just did classic is you give the kids the same link and so if you go into that, this new link for GimKit Live, what it's going to do is it's going to look a little bit different and it's going to have you submit a question. Now, what is really nice is they just can't submit a question and it automatically joins the question bank. It actually allows you as the teacher to say yes or no to the question. So you can actually send questions and be like, nope, not happening. Um, it's your question is terrible, um, not, not working. So if you guys want to see, um, somebody can send a question, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, it can be a simple question on anything that, you know, would, would be. What color is the sky? Blue, yellow, green, purple. So this is nice. You can either add or reject. I can add and now it's part of it. And so it's kind of nice. And the other nice part is just because Shelly submitted one question, her, her screen goes green like this. So I know she submitted one, she can still submit more. So um, I did this when I did this with my students. Um, what I did is I gave everyone like the ability to submit questions. Ooh, it'll be 85 degrees today. <laughs> um, and then I was able to accept or reject and make changes. And then, you know, I assigned them different sections in our textbook. And so we had a variety of ones and it's always interesting because students are not always the best at making questions. And so it was kind of interesting to see what they found important and where, what they needed. Yeah. So, and, and that's the nice part about this is it's a different way and it really puts the students in charge and then they feel like they've got that ability. So that is one thing I absolutely loved about um, this. And I'm going to go back into the main screen here. A um, couple other things that they have not to keep you going, but to be cognizant of your time is seasons. This is one of those things that really makes um, GimKit really cool is they are constantly changing the upgrades in the account and they change the, um, the music, they change the games, they do a bunch of that. So it makes it interesting for students, especially I, I think with middle schoolers, um, they sometimes get sick of the same thing. And so even though I've given them the same questions, maybe day after, you know, for a couple of days in a row, just to practice something, we play a different game. And so it can really take on that opportunity to, to mix it up. Um, let me see, let me go to the hub. One new feature on GimKit, and I'm not going to get a ton of time to really dive into it, but I want to mention it because it is kind of unique and new is they started something called GimKit Inc. And it was in beta for a very long time. Um, and it kind of reminds me of Padlet in some ways. Um, when you do GimKit Inc., there's some options here. You can do solos, classes, time machine project. What it will allow you to do is it allows people to post and create posts. So I actually um, made one last night and I thought, let's, let's just see how this works as well. Um, and so what you can do is you can create a thing and you can share it with people. And so I'm going to share this with you via the Zoom chat and you can kind of see what it looks like from a student point of view where you can create a new post and you can then um, share to that. And so this is one of those new features I think they're really trying to build out. Um, and it's kind of interesting. So when you go to create a new post, you have options. You can create an article or a story. Um, and so you can kind of see all the different elements that go with it. And so it's very simple, it's editor. Um, you have, for example, you can add the writing. So you can add the details to your challenging year. And then you can add different colors if you really, you know, cause kids love colors, let's be honest. Um, and change the style and the storyboard as well. 
and then you hit publish. And so the, what happens is it lets you publish all of these different things. Um, and so, you know, it gives you kind of a different take. And I think what they're trying to do with this is you can also, sorry, kind of going on there. You can also publish it to the whole class or just your teacher, which is kind of nice as well for students as well. And then it gives them that sense that it's published as well. Um, and this is new. I had not just literally took this into out of beta. And so I have not actually played with it with my students um, and gotten a chance to really dive in. So this is something where I, I admit to you where I think they're still trying to figure out some of the options with this. Um, but for language arts or writing, this could be a really cool option if you do have the GIM kit subscription um, using this in place of a Padlet because Padlet does also have a subscription. I think it's kind of a nice little built-in that you could do this. Um, they are also kind of talking about how you can add articles in as well. I have not seen those yet where they can, but you can do these different types of projects and see all these different things. So that is something that's cool. It's still, I think, in the works in terms of trying to work out all the bugs with it, but I anticipate that being a great options for teachers um, in the future, especially kind of, I can see it as, like I said, a replacement to Padlet as well um, for teachers. And so it's called, it's in the GimKit platform and it's GimKit Inc. And they literally just, I think last month took it out of beta and I just did not get a chance to try it with my students yet. Lauren, one, yeah. you have your five minute warning. Um, Thank two, you. we have a, a question in the chat. How often do you use games in your classroom? Because my kids seem to want to use them every day, but I don't want them to get bored. So what do you think is the ideal frequency? So I would say this last year we had, I had really long periods. We had three, we only saw our students twice a week. So we had like insanely long periods. Um, and so I used them probably at least once a week, if not twice. And like I said, I liked GimKit because I could adjust the time on a lot of them. Now, some of them you can't adjust the time on, but like if I needed a quick five minute one, I like to do that. Um, one thing I like to do is kind of mix it up because we had, there were just days we had a lot of reading. So I would do two reading sections and a game on that section, um, two reading sections, a game on that section. So I tried to incorporate them a lot, but I knew that this group of students I had really needed that brain break because we were sitting for a long period of time. When we're in a typical school year, I usually try to do at least once a week. I think that that helps. But when I say I'm doing a game once a week, I'm not taking 50 minutes for a game. I'm taking five or 10. Um, so that's kind of one of those things where once you get with a platform like GimKit, it kind of set up, you have an idea of, okay, I can spend five minutes here or 10 minutes here versus, you know, I know some teachers that when they play a review game, it's the whole period. I try to avoid that if possible, just because I, I like to use them as breaks personally. Thank you. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> um, are there, and the, oh, by the way, it, and I realized there was not a lot, I, I talked pretty fast. GimKit does have a blog in which they explain all their games. Like I said, they're constantly adding. You know, so if you want to see the floor is lava, um, trust no one, which is the imposters game, um, all of those types of things, it's all there. Uh, does it save progress for a kid if they get interrupted? Um, I cannot remember if it saves progress. I believe it does. I'm pretty sure it does. I remember some kids going back to it and it, it being let them in now for the asynchronous, obviously not the live. Any other questions for Lauren, whether it's for quizzes or gim kit? I know that was fast and furious, so. <laughs> I thought it was a good overview. Yes. 